Hi, sports fans. Another royal parent connection as the king of online sports betting done hooked up with the underground king once again to spread the news. Listen, $5. Yes, five measly dollars could get you $200 in free betting. $200 from five. Listen, do the math, right? I ain't good at math, but I want you to do the math for me. That's asinine. Five to get you 200. All you have to do is go to your Google Play Store or your Apple Store, however you get your apps, and get to downloading that DraftKings Sportsbook app, baby, because it's about to be a whole lot of fun, especially when you enter the promo code top billing and get to winning. Lots of fun this season, and it doesn't stop at just football, right? I'm all in it, baby, for basketball, baseball, whichever sport you like. DraftKings has you covered like makeup. And guess what? If you don't have online sports betting in your state, it does not matter because DraftKings Daily Fantasy is where it's at. And make sure you don't forget about those same game parlays as well. That's where you can enter multiple bets in the same game and level up for even more winning. Five will get you 200. Tell them the Underground King sent you, baby. Let's have some fun, all right? Salute. All right, y'all, I just want to kind of walk and talk with y'all a little bit, man. I got to stay on the Geno thing, man, because I'm feeling real good about this one right here. And can't nobody hold me down. Oh, no. <laughs> My man Geno right here, right? It's time to eat at Geno's. And I was wondering, has there been someone over the age of 30 who became a franchise QB? And how did that particular franchise act to him? So... While I do a few of these plays, I'm going to integrate that in just so I can have the play stuff, you know, because you guys always control my content and tell me what type of content I can do, right? I can't even respond to people on my own platform without you dudes up here trying to tell me that I'm clickbaiting or trolling or some goofy shit like that. I smack one of you motherfuckers for real. But listen, well, look, your man Kenneth Walker right here, motion to tight. So this becomes a four receiver set. On the front side, you have DK Metcalf right here. He's running a drag route backside. I like how they open this up here, and you can see a whole bunch of different things. You'll get your man Marquise Goodwin. He's going to be running an over route. I believe it's Noah Fant right here. He'll be running a deep curl. Same thing right here for Lockett Launcher himself. And then you'll get a flat route by Kenneth Walker. So Gino gets to navigate this, and I like what Gino is doing right here because he's chaining through his progressions. You can see him motion the tight right here. Look at him. Chain through his progressions on a half roll. That's not there. Look at him. Detach and Jakob. Get that bad boy to Marquise Goodwin. He's doing all this on the fly. This just fits his skill set to a T. His skill set to a damn T, man. Come on, right? You thinking about getting a younger quarterback integrating someone in just for the sake of doing it obviously this is predicated on Gino continuing to play the way he is but if you look at his statistics right now if you continues to play remotely like he's playing right now you keep the same system with the same coaches how is this not somebody you go ahead and build around you can use those picks whatever pick you think that you would use on a quarterback use it to help the team out whether it be uh, getting another receiver or getting more offensive linemen, addressing the needs on the defense. They can all go towards just building around that guy who still shouldn't cost an arm and a leg because he doesn't have that long of a track record, if you get what I'm saying. Check this out. This fade route, not only with Geno feathering the clutch, making an incredible throw here to Marquise Goodwin, it's set up for the fact that this man understands pre-snap exactly what's going to go on here. You can tell he spent his time behind the artist formerly known as Seattle starter, really honing in in the film room or even being around some coaches, maybe like a Pete Carroll and some of the guys that they had on the staff, maybe reinvigorated him to be in the film room or something like that. I don't know, but he definitely reminds me of West Virginia, Gino. And if he had played like this coming out of West Virginia, 
nobody would say anything because you kind of expected it if you saw him play in college. Now, he identifies man coverage on this one. So if, if it's man coverage right here, you will have man coverage right there. You got man coverage here on Tyler Lockett. You have the safety here. He's going to be in man coverage on Kobe Parkinson. So what does that leave? A double right here. You got that man coverage with help over the top right here by Duran James focused on DK Metcalf. That's why that guy is worth his weight in gold. He's going to draw the double team here. So then you're able to identify that pre-snap and you know exactly where to go with the ball to make that quick decision. See right here? Already knew. Put it to the corner of the end zone and yak him. Let's look at it from this, this direction right here. You can see that man eyeing it the whole way through. He knew right away, like, all right, Darren James is staying put right there. Nobody's going to be over there helping. And if I could put it to the corner of the end zone, Goodwin should be able to get it there on his transition. Oh, nasty. Look, there wasn't much room for error or anything. Look at, look at that. Where he put it at was exactly the only place that it could go in the last place that it could go before it would be out of bounds. That's an incredible throw, and that's incredible pre-snap awareness. One more time right here on the pool. Look at the mechanics of it here. It's very much the same, Gino. I had some dumbass telling me, like, oh, Gino changed his mechanics and all this and that. I'm like, what are you talking about? Did you watch Gino at West Virginia? This is the same Gino. What changed was he's in a better organization. That's it. Same exact throwing motion. Same exact placement, right? Ball placement or where you hold the ball at before the arm breaks. Same exact everything right there. Step to the target. He's always had a strong arm. He's always been very accurate. Throws a good spiral. And we see right here. Look at the product placement. Mm. Definitely got to think the ability to work that quick game is why it's looking so good in Shane Waldron's offense. Really opposed to the artist formerly known as a starter here, Jakob. Like, that's a huge part of what they do. Working that quick game, being accurate like that, damn near an extension of the run with a great run game, potentially, right? Getting there, no doubt about that. Kenneth Walker doing his thing here. But look at the accuracy and product placement on this one. Right out there. How are you going to defend that? All right, let's examine this interception here by Gino. Now, there are a couple of different ways that I analyze a turnover or something like a pick. I'm saying to myself, is it a bad throw or is it a bad decision? And then the alternative to that is, was it just a good play by the defender? See, this is what people don't understand a lot of people if they don't have experience with the sport. Sometimes the other guy on the other side is good, too. There's a reason he's also in the NFL, and this shit is going to happen. So people think that everyone's supposed to be perfect all the time. It's not going to happen that way. These other guys are on scholarship, too, if you get what I'm saying. So look at this. It's going to be a twin concept. You have stop route here by DK, Dennis Rodman Jr. himself. You have Lockett Launcher, same deal here. Then you have, uh, I believe, Fent hitting to the flats. And more than likely, Disley doing the same thing here. You have same type mirror coverage as well. So you'll have these defenders right here defending the flat. And then these defenders right here working hook curl. So if you send somebody like this or like this, you have people with squatters rights. That's where this play is going. This is not a play designed to go anywhere but those particular places. And you have to make it up before the snap. You have to determine that before the snap because it's going to be a uh, pretty much a rocker step. If you're coming out of the gun and then launching or cocking fire out, out of that, you're not going to be able to chain through progressions in the quick game or something like this that's just meant to move the change and get you a few yards here. So was it a bad decision? Not necessarily. Cock and fire got to go. Nope. <laughs> right? Cock and fire got to go. See him launching right here. Had he done the same deal with DK Metcalf, chances are that's going to happen there as well. Or maybe not. Maybe DK Metcalf is just a bigger body, and he attacks the ball with longer arms. Tyler Lockett lets the body, let the ball kind of get to him there. But guess what? It's not on Lockett. 
is really not on Gino. This is a, a really good play. I want to say by Asante Samuel Jr. here. And he's able to deflect this, and just so happens the ball does what? It caroms in the air, and it's picked off. So I, it could have been knocked down. Tariq Woolen had a play similar to that in the game, and the ball just went down. This one just so happened to have been deflected up in the air. You can see right there, DK on the, on the stop route. Same time as Lockett. Asante Samuel on it a little bit better. Obviously, he's looking over there. Maybe he could have put it low and away, but I just don't think so. Asante was going to get it there anyway, and then the ball just, just happens sometimes. Ball is popped in the air, and Kenneth Murray here, a.k.a. K-9, is there to pick it off. So check those two three things out right there. Was it a bad pass? Not necessarily. Was it a bad decision? Not necessarily. You got the same shit on both sides. So people are going to say, well, maybe he could have hit the flat. Let's go back to the flat. You see the flat here? You got the flat defenders. So maybe if he would have thought about this one, it just depends. If you open up this way, you're going to attract the attention of these guys, and they're going to play a little bit differently there. If he could have hit a uh, fan in the flat, mm, I don't know. That's tough. Maybe he could have hit fan in the flat. Maybe that could have been the way that he moved there right there. But, man, that's really nitpicking it there because you're trying to move the chains anyway. And you see where the sticks are. So, uh, I don't know. I don't think it was a bad decision or a bad pass. I just think it was a good play by the defender. Now, check this one out. Another curl route, but of the deeper variety to Tyler Lockett here. And he's able to do the full look off. Jakob. And look at that. Sante Samuel is not able to get there. Just a little bit different type of a situation here. If you're on that previous one, you're a Sante Samuel. You're in the NFL as well. You do film study. You know what a three-step drop looks like. You're able to drive on that. Sometimes these are the breaks, my friends. But on this one right here, you can see him manipulating, making sure, that, or at least trying to ensure that the safety doesn't get involved here. Step to the target. Put a little mustard on this one right here. You know it's going to be accurate if it's Geno, and it's damn accurate. <laughs> Look at that. Centered him up. Lock it able to work back to the ball this time. So maybe they both learned something there, but you, you can't work back to the ball in the quick game, so that wouldn't make it the quick game. But we see right there, then he's able to do his thing. Man, going down quicker than a $2 hooker. I love this one right here because it shows his ability to chain through progressions and be patient and work backside. Pause. So you'll get pretty much stick routes across the board. Uh, got cats just running to the sticks. Everybody's trying to move the chain here. And you'll get Will Disley here. He's going to be running an in-breaking route a little bit further back. You'll get some of these people or... Man, I can barely see who it is from this far away. But you get some clear out route type stuff too. It's all really designed to have the coverage sucked up. However, these guys are playing coverage across the boards, just working at the sticks. So he's got to watch and be patient for someone like Will Disley to clear. We see right here. Look at the defense instantly gets to the sticks there. Oh, probably can't see it from there. But look at the chaining through the progressions. Got to work front side, nothing there. Come back, Yaka. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Will Disley, this one stiffened up right there. He ain't going down like a $2 hooker. Not at all. Look at him. His legs all stiff and straight. Look like he walking on stilts. He ain't going down easy. Look at that. That's hard. But like I said before, look at him training through the progressions here. This man is made for this West Coast offense there. Great base with having the ball a little low, but that's that's just what he does. That's his thing right there. Step to the target when necessary here. Look at that. Over the top. Over the top. Kind of not really three-quarter delivery over the top. It's kind of a blend of both there, but the accuracy is undeniable. Got Disley up high with it. Around a face mask. And Disley walks the dog. <laughs> he walks the dog. Man, this throw right here spoke to me, Slim. Check this out right here. Even though it's an empty rep, I want you to see this 
going to Noah Fant right here. And look at the virgin tight window with which he has to work with. And look where he puts it. Man, it was right in his grasp. All right, good job uh, by the defender there. To to I don't even know if that's the defender. Look, Fant has it in his hands. You know what type of a throw and catch that would be? Or to put that on someone's uh, highlight package? Or his, oh, I don't know. That's tough right there, man. What a throw right there. That type of accuracy, man. Having that man in that type of system. It's like this. So looking at Gino right here, 6'3", 221. Man is 32 years old. He just turned 32 years old. Now, keep in mind, he doesn't have the wear and tear of a normal 32-year-old quarterback. He hadn't played. He does not have that. His body is fresh as a daisy. Not trying to say that anybody 32 years old will be like someone 22 years old. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But, but man, you would have to think this guy would have at least five years left in him. Maybe even longer than that. Both Schneider and Carroll are tenure. We know Carroll, despite <laughs> how it may seem, he does not have 10 years left in the business. Or maybe he does. But this could possibly be their last quarterback for them together. And you could have him the next five to seven years. It reminds me of this guy. Now, I know it's difficult to do Seattle content because people are to the extreme like Vanilla Ice. I am not by any stretch of the imagination saying that Geno Smith is Steve Young. I'm just comparing the situation and seeing someone whose career was made on the back half rather than the front half. People don't remember this, but that man did not truly become Steve Young until he was 30 years old, I believe. Started off in camp Tampa for a couple of years. It didn't go his way. Three touchdowns, eight interceptions, eight touchdowns, 13 interceptions. He went to San Francisco, got a chance to play in three games, showed himself right away uh, with 10 touchdowns and no interceptions, but then was just worked in uh, periodically for over the next, what, one, two, three, four seasons. So, like, <laughs> look at that. One, two. And remember, he was old coming into the league. So he was already 24 as a rookie. So from 26 to 30. From 26 to 30, he just backed up Joe Montana. He was 31 when he first got a chance to be the full-time starter for 16 games. Geno's 32. He was 31 years old when he got a chance to be a starter again for the first time. Same exact deal right there. So that was from 31, 32, 33, 4, 5, 6, 7, and all the way until he got hurt that last season there and when he called it quits. But he was playing very well. The season before at age 37, my man had 36 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. And he was still Steve Young. He could run a little bit still. He still had that athleticism there. 4,100 yards, playing in the same exact system that Geno Smith is playing in right now. He has 70% completion percentage. This is my dude right here, one of my all-time favorite quarterbacks. And this very well could happen for Geno Smith. I'm not saying he's going to go to the Hall of Fame or anything, but he's in a system and with a team and staff that is able get that is able to get the best out of his players. So not every rookie is going to be great. I don't know if you guys have been noticing with a lot of these rookies that people hyped up, whether it be a Justin Fields or a Zach Wilson, even in some stretches of Trevor Lawrence, these guys aren't lighting the world on fire right away. Now, they could eventually develop into that, but if you have Geno already rolling, why not see if you can just build around him and make it even better and already have your guy in place instead of wondering and hoping that you'll draft a guy who won't be a bust. That's just me. I don't know. I asked you guys that, and I wanted to weigh in and give my opinion on it. I would definitely, if Geno keeps playing like this, I would probably just build around him and, and maybe look for a young QB down the road or just somebody who could fill in admirably if something were to happen to him. But other than that, the man is athletic. He, he's a, a lot more athletic than we would give him credit for. 
Uh, he's accurate. He has a strong arm. He has a great understanding of offense, and he has a really good understanding of defense as well. So I don't know. But let me know what you guys think about that, man. That would be crazy to see somebody make their career on the back half like Steve Young did. Kurt Warner also did it as well. So you never know, all right? With that being said, it's your boy, Mid-Atlantic Murph. Strike the band. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.